Hey guys, so if you are ever curious about how a YouTuber sets up for their videos, I'm about to reveal all the weird tips, tricks, and hacks that I use to make sure my shots are picture perfect. We're not only gonna talk about the equipment and gear I use, but also some speaking techniques to make sure I'm enunciating on camera the right way. Because if I don't, I get roasted in the comments, I talk way too fast and no one can understand me. So let's get started. All right, so let's just talk about setting up the shot. Most of my YouTube channel is marketing videos, so a lot of the times I just sit down on the camera and talk. However, if I'm vlogging, the setup is like irrelevant. So this is only for sit down videos. There are three things to keep in mind when shooting in a space. Whenever I'm trying to pick a location, I have to keep in mind the lighting, the overall mess or background objects, and then white space. By making sure you keep these three things in mind, it's gonna make your video way more appealing to the eye. So the thing about the space, okay, is the problem number one is the lighting. We have this giant, window, which is beautiful in my house, but like it's causing this hard, do you see this harsh contrast lighting? So we'll need to fix that. The second thing is there is some objects in the foreground and background and we need to get rid of that because it's it's making a mess. And last thing is I feel like there's an awkward gap slash white space right around here. So I wanna make sure I'm adding furniture or objects that just balance the situation. The key I feel like with a good YouTube shot is it doesn't need to be that deep. It just needs to be balanced, good lighting and making sure that you don't look like a slob. Unless that's what you wanna do and that's totally fine and you don't need to watch this video, okay? I don't know, honestly I'm torn to like put so much effort into my videos because some of my most popular videos with a million views on this channel are like videos I shot in my dimly lit bedroom as a kid with like a bunch of shit in the background. So I don't know, step one is to fix the lighting. I have this lamp where it basically has three light bulbs and I wanna move it so when I'm sitting on the couch, it has nice lighting on the right side of my face. I'm using this window to like balance the left side but for the right side, we're gonna use this light. Okay, so this is a segment of the video where I try to talk like I know shit, but I absolutely don't. So I'm pretty sure I studied this one class where you wanna make sure the temperature and color of your light is neutral to your skin. I don't really know what that means. Essentially, I swapped out one of the light bulbs for a tungsten lighting. Essentially, it's a cooler tone color. And in combination with the yellow-ish lights and the bluish lights, you can kind of see it's more balanced. So this is what it looks like with just the yellow lighting, which most light bulbs have. But when you add the tungsten lighting, do you see it brings back the neutral tones to my skin so I don't look like super yellow. But that's something to keep in mind when doing lighting. Like you don't wanna use a freaking yellow light bulb. You wanna mix it up with warmer and cooler lights. All right, so we fixed the lighting part. Now let's talk about the overall junk in the background. All this shit in the background needs to go. So I'm gonna quickly do that. Hey guys, before we dive in, I wanna quickly say I'm having an opportunity for you to collab with me. So I'm hosting this event called The Green Room Live. All right, it's a social media conference for creators to collaborate, and one of it is which me. So this conference is totally virtual. If you wanna grab a ticket, okay, and meet me and some other few creators, go check the link in the description box. Do that, okay, bye. All right, so the last step, which is actually the most important, is the composition of your shot. So again, I'm not a photographer, but I think like sometimes if there's a lot of objects to the left of you, and not enough to write, it can look kind of empty. And in my past videos, I didn't know that was a thing and I felt like it just wasn't as aesthetic. This is so minor and cosmetic, but if you're a freak like me, this is what you can do. Like, do you see right here, it's a little bit empty. Right here, it's a bit empty. I wanna move this to there and add a plant right here to really break up the space. Yes, every time I film a video, I have to move this plant from the corner of my door to the living room. Like I said, this part is a bit heavy, so we're gonna move this light here. All right, so now that the setup is done, let's talk about equipment and cameras. So when it comes to shooting, I use this dinky ass tripod with my Sony a7R II. In a little bit, I'll go over the audio settings and lens and all that stuff. But I did start making my YouTube channel without the nicest equipment. So although I'm about to explain like the fancy shit I have right now because it's my job, you don't need this stuff. This is optional. You can make amazing videos with just your phone. And I have a lot of videos about that, which I'll link below. But I just, my heart goes out to anyone who just doesn't have this stuff, because I didn't. Now that I can, I'm really thankful, but just hope you guys know. Hope you guys are, you don't, you don't need this shit. I'm not, I'm not gonna be that regular YouTuber that tells you that you need all this shit to start a channel, because you don't. You literally don't. But as you might be curious, this is the equipment I use for my sit down videos. The body of my camera is a Sony a7R II. It's around $2,000 if you guys get it used and it's it's a really nice body. I typically shoot on 1080p at 30 frames per second. Everyone asks my freaking lens. I think this lens is absolute shit, but it does, it does a good job. It's a Selma 28 millimeter F2 lens. It was, like, it was like a couple hundred dollars, so nothing too crazy, but it's a fixed lens, so you can't zoom. It's good for portraits though, because it adds a nice bokeh, so if you're looking for a good bokeh lens, this is amazing. I can't believe I'm 
saying this, but for audio, I use the Sennheiser G4, I believe, microphone. It's a wireless lapel. So basically, this is the receiver. I have a clip on mic, which you'll see, that I put in my video. So when I talk, I can stand at any distance and the audio still picks up. But for tripod, I use this Kodak Gear tripod. It was like 50 bucks. It was nothing crazy, but you know, it does its job. It's a sturdy setup and I will place it to shoot my next video. All right, so we set up the location. We have my camera all in place. The <coughs> The last thing we have to do is just get ready. So, you're in my closet right now because we're picking out an outfit. I typically go for solid colors. It's all about the neckline. You wanna make sure that the attention goes into the eyes, right? You don't want it to be around the facility. I don't ask just for me. You can do what you want though. So I typically go for something with a neckline that's intricate with details, but it's not too distracting. So I'm gonna go for this jumpsuit. I just wanna highlight, what I like about it is a solid beige white color. It's very clean. Yeah, I think, I think this is what we're gonna go for. I like to zip up my jumpsuit around yay high, cause it's, you know, I don't want it to be up here. Look at that, that looks stupid, okay? So that is where I like it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And there we go. That is my YouTube outfit. All right, so now that you have your setup completed, your outfit completed, your gear completed, well, let's talk about speaking on camera. Now, when it comes to speaking on camera, in my 10 years on YouTube, this is the key three things you need to know. If you skip this, you will speak with a dry, crusty mouth and won't be able to properly enunciate. Enunciate, enunciate, okay, fuck, I can't even enunciate. The first thing is drink water. It's pretty obvious, but I used to drink a lot of coffee before I filmed. And the problem with coffee is although it tastes really good and you get energy, it dehydrates you. And when you're dehydrated, you have a more drier tone and mouth. Like you can't speak as long, one, and you have to take more breaks because you're just so freaking dry. So drink water. If you have to drink coffee before, do what I do, which is drink about two hours before I film so I can get the caffeine in without being so dry. All right, so my next tip for you is if you still have a dry mouth, eat an apple. Apples actually have a ton of acidity in it and it helps you salivate more. So my biggest camera tip is if you're speaking on camera and you're still having a dry mouth, by cutting up an apple, it'll help you feel more hydrated, refreshed, and again, speak longer. So as I'm eating my apple, I do want to say I used to do a lot of theater in high school and middle school. I remembered when we would do rehearsals for a play, we would recite our lines over and over and over again until we got it right. But that's exactly how you get better at something. So a lot of the times I see comments of people saying they're awkward on camera, they're just feeling like they're not great. Do you not think that I didn't have those awkward moments? Everybody goes through it. So I hope this encourages you to like restart, shoot again. It's okay. Take as many cuts as you need and obviously like get your shit out there. But if your first 100 videos suck, that's okay you don't need to like make it perfect all the time you just need to keep doing it reciting it keep speaking and you're gonna get better over time okay we're finally here so one of my biggest tips when it comes to deploying information or speaking is if you're starting out on YouTube ignore all the trendy SEO growth shit literally start with making videos you like because you're not going to be able to properly communicate something if you're not passionate about it in the beginning. Like literally a lot of people fail because they ask in the beginning, you know, what's going to grow the fastest? What can I do today to like get me a million followers or subscribers? Start with the question of like, what do I want to make today? If you guys haven't seen my whole video about my career, I started making videos for fun for around four and a half years before I actually became more consistent and developed a strategy with it. So you don't have to spend four and a half years, but at least your first couple of videos, just have fun. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because when it comes to speaking on camera, the reason why why you feel awkward sometimes is because maybe you're not in love with the topic because if something's super important you kind of get fired up right you start to use hand motions and it comes pretty naturally of course I just have to say if you're already established and you make tons of videos for your career like obviously you don't need to like be in love with everything you talked about but I think we can all agree that you need to start with a passionate topic in your first beginning videos in order to really come across as lively and less awkward it's my biggest tip honestly I was thinking about this to the end and I was thinking like say you are an established creator and you don't make videos that you necessarily love to make sure it grows into a sustainable business. But I'm like, also fuck that shit. Because like, if you're not loving what you're making, what's the whole point of YouTube? Like, yes, you want to make money, but once you make a certain amount of money, what's the point? I know a lot of people have to sacrifice happiness and the stuff they want to make for just an arbitrary number. Like I can go into a whole rant about this, but I'm recently reading a book called How to Worry About Money Less. Really good book, you should check it out. But when you think about it, like money is not real. Like yes, money gets you places and buys you things. Like the whole book of How to Worry About Money Less basically says, that you don't really see money. Yes, it's a number and you get to take out stuff, but like, do we really see money? And also, money is not really ours. Like, for example, say you got like a $5,000 brand deal. I don't 
see this money. 20% goes to my lawyer. 20% goes to taxes. 50% goes to my editors. At the end of the day, I take like a sliver of it, obviously, so I can pay the lighting up in here. So I was really reflecting off how I used to be super attached to money and equipment and everything. It's never really yours in the beginning. I don't know how this video went from how to set up a video on YouTube to um, why money is not real, but <laughs> enjoyed this video and it just encourages you to like do whatever the fuck you want life is too short to care about how many gigapixels your camera has or how many fucking like the fucking tungsten light just like film a video all the fun little knickknacks of you know production lighting and outfits are great as you progress in your career to continuously advance the production of your quality but at the start it doesn't fucking matter anyways thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed this weird video i don't like to give uh the same advice that i hear on the internet <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Dharma Nation, comment if you agree. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to read your comments. I always heart your guys' comments. Pick a comment winner. Oh yeah, shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, just comment below. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.